Texaco Time with Fred Allen. Texaco dealers from coast to coast present the Texaco Star Theater, starring Fred Allen. With Frank Sinatra, America's new singing sensation, Hilo Jack and the Dame, Portland Hopper, the Texaco Workshop Players, Al Goodman, and his orchestra. And this is yours truly, Jimmy Wallington, reminding you that even though you drive slower these days, warm weather can make your car wear out faster, unless it's protected by proper care and lubrication. Make your car last. Tomorrow, take it to your neighborhood Texaco dealer for a Texaco Spring Tonic. This week, ladies and gentlemen, Winston Churchill is in Washington. Every time Mr. Churchill meets Mr. Roosevelt, something happens. Tonight, we bring you a man who meets you every Sunday night, and nothing happens. And here he is, Fred Allen. <laughs> Thank you, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And Jimmy, I'm glad that you mentioned Mr. Churchill's visit. He certainly surprised everyone, dropping into Washington out of a clear sky. Say, I wonder what Mr. Churchill came over to see the president about, Fred. Well, he came over here to get a ration book, Jimmy. Now, what does Winston Churchill need with a ration book? When the time comes, Mr. Churchill wants to have enough points to bring home the bacon, Jimmy. That's the only reason he would want a ration book. You know, this is the fourth time the president and Mr. Churchill have met, twice at Washington, once at sea, and once at Casablanca. Say, I wonder where they'll meet the next time, Fred. In Berlin, Jimmy, I'm hoping. Do you know why the Germans and the Italians surrendered at Tunisia last week? Uh, why, Fred? They know the quickest way they can get back home to Germany and Italy is to follow the American and English armies, <laughs> Jimmy. You know, uh, uh, I, in the newsreels, I saw the Germans were yelling, Heil Hitler, and leaving the I out of Heil. I saw the picture. <laughs> well, it only goes to... Mr. Allen! Portland, she's with well, you're just, uh, you're just in time, Portland. Jimmy and I were talking over the news of the week. What's new to your grotesque way of thinking? Nothing much. Really? Mama's learning to be a motorman. A mo oh, yes. I read that New York is going to have women running the trolley cars shortly. Do you think your, your uh, mother will make good running a trolley? She should. Mama has a one-track mind. Uh <laughs> Well, that helps more power to the uh, old lady. But uh, have you <laughs> tell me, have they have they trusted your mother? Have they trusted your mother out with a streetcar yet? Yes, Mama made her solo trip yesterday. Oh, she soloed, huh? How did she? Uh, how did she do? Well, in the morning, Mama ran the trolley cross town on Thirty Second Street and only took in eighty five cents. Oh, she had took a commission. I was. She was working. <laughs> If she had to pay commission on it, that's no good, is it? In the afternoon, Mama cleaned up. How? During the rush hour, Mama ran her trolley down into the subway and made $48. Oh, well, that's the thing to do if you're running a streetcar. Go where the money is. That's... <laughs> and go reminds me, Portman, we'd better go down to Allen's Alley. Oh, have you a question? Oh, yes. Today, with meat rationing, many people are starting to raise a few chickens along with their victory garden. The Department of Agriculture has had thousands of requests for information on chicken raising. And so, keeping up with the times, our question tonight is, are you raising chickens? And if you are, how are you doing? Shall we go? Well, if we don't, the program will finish 25 minutes early. I'll send it. <laughs> Let us away. Ah, uh, here we are back in Allen's Alley, Portland. I'll see if John Doe is in. Oh, good evening, Brother Allen. Uh, <laughs> are you raising any chickens, Mr. Joe? Don't mention chickens to me. I've been married 30 years. What has being married 30 years got to do with raising chickens? Brother, one old cluck around the house is enough. <laughs> Well, it looks as though Mr. Doe with his old hen is all set. Let's see what's going on next door here. No. Uh, 
<laughs> ah, Mrs. Newstrom, have you done anything about the uh, this poultry business? I am liking only one egg for breakfast. One egg? Then you only need one chicken. Exactly. A friend is getting for me also one chicken. A Plymouth rack. A Plymouth rack. <laughs> A Plymouth rack with nest complete. Oh, you got a nest that came with the hen, huh? And the eggs started rolling in, did they? What eggs? <laughs> Two weeks later, I am learning. Learning what? The nest is a nest, but the chicken is not a chicken. <laughs> no? It is a rooster. <laughs> <laughs> What did you do? The next day, in a frenzy, hmm. I am cooking the whole business. Well, how was it? The rooster is soft. Uh-huh. But the nest is delicious. <laughs> well, the uh, next chicken... Uh, I wonder how uh, Socrates Mulligan is faring. I... <laughs> Every time you say hello, you air condition the place, Doctor. <laughs> Tell me, have you uh, have you been fooling around with chickens? Uh, yeah, when they got kids, uh, I figured I'll get me a mix of eggs, hatch them out, and go into the chicken business. Uh huh. And you uh, you bought the eggs? Uh, I was just going to when a friend wised me up. How, Socrates? Uh, that's French. What do you want, horsing around with eggs and chickens and hatches? Yeah. So he says, get an incubator. It'll do the whole business. And you, uh, you bought an incubator? Uh, six months ago. And today, you are a chicken baron. Uh, today, I am a dead duck. <laughs> <laughs> Why, Socrates? Uh, for six months, I've been running out every morning. Yes? Uh, that darn incubator ain't laid an egg yet. <laughs> well, Socrates will learn that you cannot egg an incubator on. Now, let's see what is going on in this little house at the end of the alley. Bonsoir, all. S'il vous plaît. Falstaff here with Rondelay. Please, Sir Falstaff, no forms tonight. Have you heard she thought that I was just an entity when suddenly I revealed my identity? No. <laughs> or, uh... No, no. Said uh, General Eisenhower to Adolf Hitler, brother, you're getting littler and littler? <laughs> no, I... <laughs> my mother wouldn't have raised me if she knew I had that ace in the hole? Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. You have five tonight. You uh, upset the whole apple cart here tonight. We are talking about raising chickens. Approximately why I am here. Yeah. I have written a poem. What is your chicken poem called? That's why a hen lays an egg. How does it go? Why does a hen lay an egg? This question is whether the ages. For eons, it baffled men the world or morons as well as sages. Adam first asked the question as the serpent lay coiled in the grass. Adam said, "Why does a hen lay an egg?" The serpent said, brother, I pass. Why does a hen lay an egg? Since Adam's day, it puzzled all scholars. It was asked by Phil Baker last Sunday night. The contestant lost $64. <laughs> Tonight, I will answer this question. For the nonce, I am pundit, not joker. The reason a hen lays an egg is because if she coughed up the egg, it would choke her. <laughs> Falstaff picks up his egg and scrambles. We turn to find Hilo, Jack, and the Dame at their microphone. Guided by Maestro Al Goodman, the kids sing Coming In on a Wing and a Prayer. Coming in on a wing and a prayer. With 
flapping in on the wing, but we're singing a song to help us along. Look below, there's a field over there. So there's one mother tongue we can still carry on. Coming in on the wing and the Jack and the dame, that was 12. And here's Jimmy Wallington hobbling up to the microphone. What's the trouble, Jimmy? You're limping around like a centipede who's lost his number 17 coupon. Oh, I worked for my victory garden all day yesterday, Fred. I'm a little stiff. A little stiff, he says. You're six feet tall, Jimmy. Well, it's no joke, Fred. You know, a day of hard work certainly taught me one thing. I found out that I'm like the average car. You're like the average car in what way? Well, I'm not as young as I used to be, Fred. Really? No. You know, there aren't any new cars these days, and they're all beginning to feel their age, especially those cars that are still using last winter's lubricant. They feel their years in their gears, huh? <laughs> all over, Fred. Oh, I see. But you can give an aging car a new lease on life with a Texaco dealer's spring tonic. That Texaco's famous Marfax 40-point chassis lubrication, a crankcase change to Texaco's insulated Haviland motor oil, and a stem to stern checkup on every point where trouble can start. Battery, radiator, and other danger spots. So see your Texaco dealer soon. That was me for from for me and my gal, play, <laughs> played by Al Goodman and the board. Mr. Goodman's orchestra can be seen any day at the Paramount Theater, waiting in line to hear Harry James. <laughs> and now, and now, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Allen. I, no, I won't have time now, Portland. I have to look over this new song I've written. Yes, you know, this song of mine may be another three itty fishes and an itty bitty poo. You've written a song? <laughs> yeah, well, you can just... You can laugh. Go ahead, you can laugh. If I get... If I can get our guests to sing my song tonight, my song will be number one on your all-time, all-time, all-time. Well... <laughs> Yes. Why, he's the most talked of singer in the country today. His voice is thrilling millions. What? Thrilling, Sam? Uh, <laughs> no, no, our guest isn't an opera personality, Portland. <laughs> he's Frank Sinatra. Pull yourself together. You won't you won't have time to to roll down your stockings and put on your sloppy Joe sweater. If I can get Frank Sinatra to sing my song, I'll be one of the say this may be Frank now. Come in. Oh, yes, miss. Hail today, not Frank Sinatra. Hail today, our oh, eyes are Oh, wait a minute, wait. Hail just, today, just, just, just please. Uh you are uh I'm Cuddle Flanagan. That's right. You were hailing around here last week. You were president of the Fred Allen Fan Club, is that right? Yeah, but that outfit fell apart. Uh, <laughs> we reorganized. Oh. Well, what is your fan club called now? Just the one of the girls who would lay down and die for Frank Sinatra. <laughs> what is it you want? Well, to... I got a presentation to give place like to Frank Sinatra. Oh, a presentation? Yeah. I heard Frank Sinatra sing, You'd be so nice to come home to. And you want to give him? My address. Yahoo! <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> that dame would drive the street singer indoors on a sunny day, yes. Well, you see, Portland, what Frank Sinatra's singing is doing to people. If he will only sing my song... Oh, this must be Frank now. Come in. Is Sinatra here yet? Uh, yes, officer. Is something wrong? I'm from the Jitterbug Riot Squad. I've been assigned to Sinatra. Well, you, uh, you won't have any trouble here. That's what they told me when he opened at the Paramount. <laughs> and there was confusion? It was a riot. Three of my men were trampled silly with sports shoes. <laughs> and the sergeant... The sergeant was slugged with a loaded yo-yo. Well, I, uh, officer, I think we're prepared tonight. Have you got the stage door bolted? Yes, officer. Got the aisles roped off so the jitterbugs can't dance in them? Yes, officer. You got the screens up so they can't creep in through the air conditioning? Yes. Okay, then I'll make my announcement. 
Now, please, kids, let's have no trouble tonight. When you tear Mr. Sinatra's clothes off, take them home. Don't leave no rags around the seat. Have you, uh, have you finished? You have another line, yeah, officer, if you don't mind. He can't wait to he can't wait to see Frank Sinatra himself yet. Yeah, I finished. That takes care of everything. You can bring him on now. Fine, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to have you meet Frank Sinatra. Thank you very much. Uh, gosh, Frank, right now, I must be the envy of every jitterbug in America. Well, how do you mean, Fred? Why, I'm standing right next to you. I'm close enough to touch you. Uh-huh. They told me you'd start off by trying to make a touch. <laughs> Two lines and I'm a straight man already. <laughs> well, tell me, Frank, what is this terrific appeal you have? Girl stampede wherever you go. What have you got that I haven't got? Well, perhaps I haven't got something that you have got, Fred. Now, please, no life boy plugs, Frank. Oh, right, right. Now, look, Frank, you're on the hit parade. You have your own program. You sing at nightclubs and theaters. You must need a lot of songs. Now, I have a song. Uh, uh, Fred, uh, some other time. I'm working at Frank Daly's Terrace Room over in Newark, and I've got another show to do tonight. Now, look, I can meet you, Frank. I can meet you right after the show. If you, I'll bring my metronome. If you hear me, if you hear me sing this song. No, Fred, I'm sorry. After the show, I've got to rehearse some new numbers. I'm opening the Paramount a week from Wednesday. Again? Well, you were just there. Why, uh, you were just there a few months ago. They held you over for eight weeks. That's right, Fred. The public has been very kind to me. Why, the last time you played the Paramount, the Jitterbugs had a picnic there, Frank. The kids built campfires in the lounge. They had a big weenie roast going in the balcony. And when the picture finally went on, two Guy Lombardo fans were mugged in the mezzanine. Well, jitterbugs are inclined to be enthusiastic, <laughs> but they're all good kids, really. They are. And uh, speaking of kids, Frank, kids will go for this song I have. Now, look, you say you're tied up tonight. I'll get up early and sing it for you tomorrow morning. I'm sorry. Tomorrow I've got a conference. You know, I'm going to make a picture for RKO. Oh, good. I'm going to make a picture, too. What, uh, what is your picture? It's a musical, Fred, called Higher and Higher. Mm -hmm. Michelle Morgan and George Murphy are in it, too. What is your picture? Well, the, my picture, the story isn't finished yet, Frank. But the cast is all set. I, I, I'm being starred with Gunther Badu and Ingrid Knischmeister. Gunther Badu? Yes, they're both foreign stars, you see. I am the only one who speaks English in the picture. When, when Gunther and Ingrid are on, there'll be titles in English flashed on the bottom of the screen as I am speaking English up screen, you see. <laughs> But this, but this, uh, this song I'm speaking Look, Fred, everybody brings me songs. But Frank, uh, every snook I meet thinks he's a songwriter. But Frank, I... Uh, My butcher wrote a song called, I Used to Meet You, But I Can't Anymore. <laughs> Even my, even my garbage man wrote a song. The garbage man? Yes, Fred. He calls it, I treasure that cemento. It's a little memento of you. <laughs> I am song happy, Fred. But all right. All right, Frank. I can take a hint. I have another singer begging for my song. And remember, Frank Sinatra, the day Georgie Jessel takes your place on the hit parade, you will know the reason why. Well, Fred, I'm sorry. Perhaps I've been a little hasty. What is the song of yours? Well, you know what a smash hit Brazil was. Yes. Well, my song is the closest you can get to Brazil. It's called Chili. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll run it over for you. Uh-huh. Uh, boys. These, these, are, these boys are two native Cubans, Frank. They, uh... Give me the authentic rumba background, you see. Say, uh, this little guy's face looks very familiar. The little one, yes. He used to do Xavier Cougar's laundry, the little one. <laughs> is the uh, big one a celebrity, too? And the big one, the tall one, uh, yes, he is. He brought the first enchilado over to Staten Island, this big fella. Have you got your maracas, boys? Si, maracas, si, maracas. maracas. Uh, they've got their maracas, Frank. Well, let's go, amigos. Chili, Chili, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, Just a minute, boy. 
yes, uh, yes, Frank. What kind of a song is this? It only has one word. Well, yes, chili, one word is the verse, you see. The chorus comes later. Uh-huh. Be patient, Frank. It comes out all right. I'll guarantee you. All right, boys. Chili. I met a filly. They call Millie. What a dilly was a filly. Dressed all lily white and filly with a skin just like vanilla. And it's the same with chili down in Chili. 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 Small world, Frank. If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't be standing here in the spotlight tonight getting this applause. Mm Mm-hmm. You mean you were responsible for our success? In a roundabout way, Frank. You see, you are the jitterbug's idol, and I started the whole jitterbug movement. You know, to look at me, you wouldn't believe that I was the first jitterbug. No, I wouldn't. How did it happen? (laughs) Well, I mean, you wouldn't now, but I mean, look back a few years. How did it happen? I'll tell you. Syncopation ran in our family, Frank. When I was two days old, I crept out of my crib and crawled down a gopher hole. My father said, Hey, come up out of that gopher hole, son. And I said, Dig me, Daddy, dig me. (laughs) You see, when I was two days old, they dug me. For the next 17 years, I slept in the attic. I was on the beam. When I was 19... (laughs) When I was 19, I decided to go to New York. I ordered a suit from a a Mr. Zeiss, a little Dutch tailor in town. And the day I called for the suit, when it was finished, Mr. Zeiss said... Yeah, yeah. Everything is ready now. Try it on, huh? Well, I put the suit on. The thing was a mess. I said, Mr. Zeiss, look at this suit. The pants are all baggy at the knees. And the cuffs are choking my ankles. The coat comes down to my shins, and the lapels are hanging down on my hips. You call this a suit? Uh, I am so sorry. I am breaking my glasses, and I am making the suit for memory. But it's too... It's too big. I'm baggy all over. Oh, my eyes are too bad. Ain't you a tall, fat man? No, no, I'm short and thin. Oh, Himmel, I am memorizing the wrong man. Well, what about, what about this suit? Well, the suit suits you. Take it. When the suit suits you, it's a suit suit. <laughs> With my suit suit, I left for New York. I got a job as a waiter in a flop house cafeteria. One day, the manager caught me lapping the butter off some waffles. The manager said... We've had enough of your hot licks, Alan. You're through. <laughs> Then I got a job as a subway guard. One day I was packing people into the Bronx Express. The vice president of the R.I.T. said... You're jamming these people in too tight. This is your last jam session, Alan. You're fired. (laughs) Then I got a job putting the names up on a movie theater marquee. One morning I put up Mickey Rooney's name and left the M out of Mickey. The theater manager said... Mickey Rooney? I'll lift you, Alan Tramp. The day after the theater manager called me a Nicky, I got my draft notice, Frank. After I uh, had my physical, the head of the draft board says, Alan, we tapped your knee. Uh-huh. The joint's jumping. Yes, sir. <laughs> we, uh, we tapped your head. Brother, you're solid. Solid. That makes me a jitterbug, sir. Am I in? Yes, Alan. This draft board doesn't know much about jive, but we can certainly send you. Uh-huh. Well, that's my story, Frank Sinatra. I was the first Dickie, the first one to hold a jam session, the first one to have somebody dig me. I was solid. I had the first suit suit. I was the original Jitterbug. And today, when the Jitterbug craze is finally sweeping the country, Frank, here I am with only an A card. I can't even go to town. Before we close the Texaco Star Theater, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Frank Sinatra for dropping in tonight. Next week, our guest will be the new literary light, the author of that new book, So Help Me, Georgie Jessel. And now, Jimmy, if you'd like to sum up for the defense... For the defense of your car against excessive warm weather wear, give it a Texaco Spring Tonics now. Thermal fact chassis lubrication, a crankcase refilled with Texaco's famous insulated Haviland motor oil, and a stem to stern checkup by your neighborhood Texaco dealer. A Texaco Spring Tonic gives aging cars a new lease on life. Thank you, Jimmy. This is Fred Allen speaking for Texaco dealers from coast to coast, inviting you to tune in again next Sunday and to drive in at any time. Remember, you're welcome. Good night. Thank you. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.